Hello, all you galactic pilots. Welcome to the Hive of Scum and Villainy. You must be cautious. That's right. It's another episode of Faking Star Wars Radio, the official podcast of FakingStarWars.net. This week we have a fantastic show for all of you. We'll discuss the Star Wars properties. How much is too much with the news of the Clone Wars reboot and Rebels and live TV shows and everything? How much is too much? We'll have a tweet of the week, listener mail, the ever popular duel of the fakes, and as usual, a few surprises. Also, my sources tell me that Kylo Ren himself may drop into the studio at some point. There is some sad news that we need to talk about before we get going today, though. Unfortunately, my co-host, Assassin Droid IG-69, has been incarcerated. I guess he assassinated the wrong Imperial officer. In his stead, we have a new co-host with me today, all the way from the Duloc swamps of Endor. It's Teeb Rontor. Say hello, Teeb. Hey, how's it going? It's Teeb. We're really happy to have you with us today. Um... Have you been listening to the podcast for a long time? You know, whenever I have time, Very if you're good. lucky. <laughs> great. Well, uh, let's hope we have a great episode. Duel of the face. Duel of the face. Well, you know what that uh, soundtrack means, Teeb? It's time for Duel of the Fakes. Are you familiar with this game? I can't get that song out of my head. It's it's haunting. Well, you know, we actually consulted with John Williams himself to record that. Can you believe it? You, you can tell. I mean, it, it's, it's breathtaking, really. Mm. Like it has me. all his influence written all over it, you know. So for yes. those of you who don't know, this is the game where I read off three news stories that should be completely fake. Total baloney. But one of them is just pretending to be baloney. Got it? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at myself in the mirror. Yeah, I'm oh, paying attention now. Oh, it's all cool. So, um, IG is one for three. So, let's see if you can get the uh, ratio up to 50% and go two for four today, huh, Teeb? That's too much math. Let's just do this. <laughs> so, this time we're focusing on stories about Dave Filoni, the fan favorite mastermind behind Lucasfilm's animation projects, uh, including the Star Wars Clone Wars and Rebels. So, these are three stories about Filoni that should all be baloney. See what I did there? Ah. First nice. up, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art in Los Angeles is set to include a wing dedicated to animation, which will be overseen by Lucas's protege, Dave Filoni. Okay, that's story number one. Story number two, the next story should be complete baloney. In 2005, Dave Filoni attended the premiere for Revenge of the Sith, dressed as Jedi Master Plu Koon. You know who Plu Koon is, Teeb? Plu Coon. I think I know that guy. I yeah. think, I think I, I think I might have hu- hu- not hustled. Uh, you know, had taken advantage of his wife. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Once or twice. I mean, a couple times. Uh, he wasn't a very good Jedi then, because they're not supposed to uh, to marry, right? So. Well, he told me it was his wife. I, I don't ask questions. <laughs> I mean, he just wanted to watch. I'm right, sorry. Right. Right. So that's a bit of backstory, I guess, that they should go into in maybe a, a spinoff episode of uh, Clone Wars or something, huh? I'd watch it, if I'm in it. So uh, episode, or, uh, the third story here is, uh, last but not least, Dave Filoni's fascination with wolves stems from his heritage. He's actually one quarter Cherokee, and his Native American name is Keeper of Wolf Flame. So... So first story about him uh, heading up the animation wing. Second story is about him dressing up as Jedi Master Plu Koon for Revenge of the Sith's premiere. And the third one is his wolf holder, keeper of the wolf flame. Which one sounds like real baloney to you, Teeb? Real baloney. So real baloney is baloney. Yes. Baloney baloney. Baloney baloney, not fake. Oh, this is so hard. Nobody told me. Well... I'm just going to go with the wolf thing because I just like wolves. So I think that sounds about right to me. Okay. Wolves. So let, let me give you just a little more information about the Plukun uh, story. Uh, so Plukun was actually a Jedi who was killed during um, the uh, Executive Order 66. Uh, he's actually flying onto like some sort of uh, gravity planet, and he was shot, I guess, by the stormtroopers behind him or whatever it is. So I originally thought he was actually the guy who you know, force through C-3PO 
uh, yes. Geonosis, but um, apparently I was the wrong Frogman. Frogman, Frogman. Yeah, so he has that gas max kind of thing. He actually looks like um, Two Tubes, the guy from uh, Rogue One. I think they might be similar species, maybe. Ah. Uh, but so yeah, maybe so that's who I seduced. His, his, maybe I seduced that guy's wife because if you're <laughs> saying this guy's dead, maybe he told me he was Blue Coon. I'm I'm very confused now. Right, right. What do you think about the first story about the animation wing? Are you familiar with the Lucas uh, Animation Narrative Arts Museum? Have you heard about that? No, that sounds like a real nerd thing. Yeah, so I guess George Lucas wanted to open up this museum originally in Chicago. And, you know, they, they had everything set. They recorded all their notes uh, for, for, you know, the blueprints and everything. Um, and then I guess uh, somehow they didn't hit save and they lost everything. And so, oh uh, my God! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they the had to go back. The level of incompetence. It's terrible, right? And so then they had to go back. Mind-numbingly staggering. At that point, Chicago yes. had already given away the site, and there was no place to put it in. And so they decided to do it again and put it in Los Angeles instead. So. Okay. So which one do you think? Do you think it's the first one, the museum? The second one, the Revenge of the Sith, uh, Plukoon dress-up cosplay, or the third one, the Keeper of the Wolf Flame? Dances with Wolves is a really long movie. And I feel like this has gone on long enough. So I think I'm going to say Dances with Wolves. All right, cool. Um, well, actually, that's a fake story. Uh, we couldn't find any information about uh, Dave Filoni's genealogy. Um, but uh, we do know that he grew up in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I've never been there. But that is nowhere Lebanon. near the Cherokee uh, area of southwestern region of the United States. So, yeah. So that's the fake. That's I think it would actually be more Iroquois. Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, Iroquois. Um Iroquois? Is it, is it Iroquois? Iroquois? It's, you know, what if oh, you it's have definitely two, Iroquois. So if two people are, are Iroquois... More than one? You have Iroquois or Iroquoisum? Iroquandry? How, how many? Iroquoisum. 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 Okay. correct. Iroquoisum is definitely correct. Absolutely. Iro Iroquoxen. So. And uh, the other one that's fake Iroquois. is the first one about the animation uh, wing at the Lucas Center for Narrative Arts, uh -huh. which means that number two is the truth. Uh, he actually did do some cosplay as Plu Koon for Revenge of the Sith. Have you well, ever? Well, there, there you go. Have you ever done any cosplay, Teeb? Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, any of the Comic Cons I go to, I cosplay as a nerd who walks around and looks at everybody and mocks them mercilessly. Sometimes I'll dress up as Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, and and people think I'm him, but I'm not. I'm definitely not him. Oh wow. Cool. I uh, I usually try to dress up as the most obscure Star Wars character possible. It's a way of feeling superior. Uh, without Star Wars, it's it's uh, not possible to feel superior. So I use it to feel feel like I'm greater than everyone else. I've always yeah I, I hear you. I've always toyed around with the idea of dressing up as one of the bounty hunters from the old movie Critters. I don't know if you're familiar with Critters, oh, sure. but uh, it's uh, it's one of my favorite movies growing up. It's just ridiculously uh, insane and fun. And I'd love to see somebody actually recognize that cosplay, but I don't know. I've never gotten off my butt and actually done it. Well, that's for uh, that's for another time. Great job. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't get it right on Duel of the Fakes. We're down to one out of four, twenty-five percent. So, if you have any ideas for another Duel of the Fakes, hit me up on Twitter at DuperStorm, or send your messages to Faking Star Wars Radio on Twitter. And if we like your ideas, we'll read it on the next step, uh, next bit of Duel of the Fakes. So, hey, good job anyway, T. It was your first try. Well, yeah. I tried. I didn't know there'd be so much math, though. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Kyber Crystal Emporium is the galaxy's leading specialty fine jewelry retail store, serving customers with only the finest taste in luxury adornment. Life Day is coming up, and what better way to show the special angel from the moons of Iago how much you care than with a flawless, colorless, princess-cut, conflict-free Kyber Crystal love ring. We specialize in rare mineral pendants, engagement rings, and red plum blooms. Not sure what to buy for that special Twilight dancer you've been admiring from afar? Our talented sales staff of Ugnaughts will assist you in making the perfect selection. Also, take advantage of our new engagement planning service. You choose the setting for popping the question, we take care of the rest. Choose from the chillingly romantic icy caves of Hoth to the spectacular volcanic scenery of Mustafar. Or ask her for your hand on a speeder bike, being chased by our mock Imperial stormtroopers in the wilds of Endor. She'll never forget that special moment with an engagement package from Kyber. This week only, make a purchase over 100 credits and receive a free poor snippet carved, especially for you, as our thank you gift. Remember, every kiss begins with Kyber. For that special someone, Kyber Crystal Emporium, every kiss begins with Kyber. 
Hey, Teeb, we've got a Star Wars poll from Twitter for you today. Have you uh, heard any of our polls in the past? I try not to get involved with polls because then, you know, then you're like, you're, you're really, you're committing to something, and I don't believe in committing. Right, yeah. So so the polls, um, you know, they have contributed a lot to the podcast. They they bring all kinds of different sausages, occasionally vodka, um, you know, a lot of jokes, as you know. Like, we try not to read racist jokes on the podcast, but the polls are constantly submitting them, so we've tried to respect that as well. Absolutely. I mean, anytime a couple of Germans get together in a bar, the polls get nervous. Uh, and I am part Polish, so I'm very well aware of that. <laughs> very good. Well, this particular poll... Uh, says, uh, which director who almost made a Star Wars film would you like to see get another chance? So as you know, there's been a lot of people who originally were associated with a Star Wars film, but were either given the axe or the boot, possibly were murdered in a back alley somewhere, or just decided not to go. Yeah. Um, so here are the choices. Uh, first of all, Colin Trevorrow. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with him from Jurassic uh, World. Uh, Lord and Miller. Do you know who Lord and Miller are? I do, but uh, why don't you tell me who they are? Well, uh, Lord and Miller, I guess, were uh, they originally were uh, the directors on the Han Solo, a Star Wars movie, before they got the boot very late into production, and Ron Howard finished it up. So, ah, the Willow director came in and saved them. That's right. They also did yeah. the Lego movie. Yes, they did do the Lego movie. That is a fantastic movie. I, I really enjoyed that one, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. They also I was a little um, disturbed they didn't call me and get some input from me, but, I mean, they did a good job despite that. They also, I, I think they have a law firm, too, so... Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes. It's... And uh, they, you know, they don't want me to say this on the air, but they actually are some of the founding members of the Bilderberg Conspiracy Group, so... Ah, I know those guys. I know those guys. I've seen their work. I, I, I think they're doing a really good job. Yeah. I think the world's in a great... It's, it's a great place right now, and I can't think of anything that would need any improvement, so bang up job, Laura Miller. Yeah. Uh, Josh Trank, who uh, associated very early on with uh, a Boba Fett movie, um, but that never came to fruition. And then David Lynch, who did uh, uh, Triple Peaks. Have you heard of Triple Peaks? Triple Peaks, Triple yeah. Peaks. Yeah, I think I know that one. That's that Tom Skerritt show. Yeah, yeah. From the 90s, like back when things were cool, but not as cool as the 80s. <laughs> so do you have a preference on any of these guys for a, for a Star Wars movie? Get a second chance here. Give them to me one more time. Just... Break them down. Sure. Not break them down. Just give them to me again. So Colin Trevorrow, Lord Miller. Pass. Josh Trank. Pass. And uh, David Lynch. David Lynch. Wasn't there one more? I thought there were four. Uh, Trevorrow, Lord Miller, Josh Trank, and David Lynch. I think I'm going to go with Trank just because – is he the one with the Boba Fett? Yeah. Well, that's what the rumors were that he was going to be so doing. So you're telling me that there was a director for Boba Fett that died – prematurely uh in, well in an embarrassing way like the movie died just like boba fett that's right yes the movie died itself and then maybe it's going to be going to be rebooted or re rehashed uh i guess it went into development hell and you know things never returned from there so um, i but, think that i think they should give it to trank then because just for that reason because boba fett needs some justice he's had know? a rough go you know people did not like what he did with fantastic four and he uh sort of went to war with his studio over it um so he actually may get assassinated himself well, I mean, as long as he doesn't go out like a punk and fall <laughs> into a hole. <laughs> Come on. Right, right. Yeah. I don't even want to get started on that, but there needs to be. And then if you've read the Han Solo trilogy, the way that Boba Fett was handled in that trilogy was so much better than the way that it was handled in the prequels. I was very disappointed with uh, what they did to Boba Fett. And now he now he's Australian or Kiwi or I don't uh, he's know. Kiwi, yeah. Get him, Dad. Get him, get him yeah, Dad. Uh, yeah. Oh, you just triggered me so bad. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I have that effect on women too. Um, oh. So, uh, so yeah. So actually, Josh Trank was the least popular choice with only three percent of the votes, and the most popular was Colin Trevorrow. So I think a lot of fans were interested to see what he was going to be doing with Episode Nine, uh, and maybe you know maybe uh, the aftermath. I think it had something to do with Carrie Fisher's death as well. You know, uh, uh, they just yes. couldn't see eye to eye there. So. Well, you know, you always have to listen to the fans because the fans always know everything. Absolutely. Everybody knows that. I mean, duh. Well, that's why we have this podcast because there haven't been any people out there in the Twitter sphere at all who have ever had any problem with uh, the jokes that we've made about Star Wars. We have like uh, oh, absolutely. no enemies, no one out there dislikes us. So, you know, we just keep well, it. Well, we're members it. of the we're, – we're cursory members of the Bilderberg group. So, you know, we have – we're taken care of. We're good. 
Work. That's right. That's right. So there you go, Colin Trevorrow. So uh, if you have an idea for a poll, go ahead and hit us on Twitter, uh, and we'll put it on the podcast next episode. We're really excited and a bit nervous to present an all-new feature here at Faking Star Wars Radio, starring everyone's favorite emo bad boy, Kylo Ren. No! You see, while Kylo may have offed his father Han Solo in The Force Awakens, he spent the last few years in regret. Oh, no. Not for killing Han Solo, of course, (laughs) but for the manner with which he did it. Since that fateful day, Kylo has done nothing but second-guess himself, dreaming of countless other more cunning and creative ways he could have killed his daddy. So without further ado, FSW Radio presents Six Million Ways to Kill Han Solo by Kylo Ren. I hope you have some time. Is, is this thing on? I call this one Unlucky Roll of the Die, Die, Die. First, I take my dad's stupid lucky dice and strangle him with them until he's blue in the face. Then I reach behind his ear and show him a magic coin I had hidden there and say, You lose. Magic is real. Before tossing him onto a giant sabak table with spikes on every inch of the board. Wait, that's late, right? To, to expect it. No, no, no. You're better than this, grandfather. Show me the, show me the dark. Uh, th- thank you. Thank you, Kylo. Oh, it's always a pleasure. No! That was awkward. So it is summer, Teeb, and one of the things we're looking forward to doing in a future episode of the podcast is we want to do a big trivia smashdown uh, event with uh, listeners from around the world. Have you ever done Star Wars trivia? I actually had one of the first Star Wars trivia books that some 14-year-old kid wrote in 1981. Ooh, were the pages stuck together? Ugh. Well, no, I mean, he wrote it, and I I did, I never did that. I mean, <laughs> cool. never. Well, oh, look at me. Uh, yeah. I don't have to. Right, right. Well, we're going to do this big uh, trivia event. Um, we just uh, wanted to throw it out there so people know. And even if you're interested in being a contestant, you can contact me at DuperStorm on Twitter or FSW Radio, and we'll uh, put you through a very elaborate, painful screening process. And if you make the cut, you can be on the podcast trivia event. It was very hard to get on here. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> well, we made an exception for you. Usually we make people do like marathons and stuff. So, But you took one look at my headshot and knew that I was right. Yes, I get it. absolutely. Uh, and probably one of the prizes for the trivia event is going to be some of our great T-shirts, which you can get on Tee Public. Uh, have you seen some of those designs? Yeah, they're uh, they're fantastic. They're constantly changing. Uh, we, you know, we're throwing up new designs every week, and some of these are going to become collectors' items. So, I might have some good ideas for you guys. We'll talk offline. Absolutely. I mean, if you do have some, make sure you patent them so that you can get the ten uh, percent, uh, you know, royalties on them, and you'll be a millionaire easily. So. Uh, Absolutely. Great. I mean, that's my goal, obviously. Okay, so again, uh, get to our website, get some t-shirts, buy them for yourself, for your friends, for your babies, for your dog. And uh, if you're interested in being on our trivia event later this year, please contact me and we really can work with you. So, Well, Teeb, we have another Mad Lib. Uh, This is something we've just started doing in the last few episodes. Are you familiar with Mad Libs? I am familiar with Mad Libs, yes. Did you ever do them as a kid? Absolutely. They were always fart and poop and pee. Uh, Oh, yeah. Good. Well, uh, this uh, Mad Lib is one that we've had on Twitter for the last week, and we've gotten some suggestions from the fans of the podcast and the website, and I'm going to ask you just to finish it up with a few words at the end. Is that okay with you? That sounds good. Great. So, uh, first word I need is a planet. Existing planets, or? I'll leave it up to you to interpret it. Uh, Let's go with Alderaan. Okay. Uh, A good adjective. A guide. Bug-eyed. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, a name? I think that green guy, Kid Fisto, I think he's the green guy. Yeah, I think that's right. That guy owes me money. <laughs> okay. And the last one, uh, we need a noun. Noun. Uh... Oh, blaster. Blaster's good. Okay, great. Well, uh, we've got uh, Gemma the Hutt here in the studio to read us the Mad Lib that you've constructed. Gemma, take it away. General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Moist Wars. 
Now he hangs you to spit him in the struggle against the Ewoks. I regret that I am unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my Tauntaun has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you the castle has failed. I have placed Jedi, vital to the survival of the Rebellion, into the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to gallivant it. You must see this droid heartily delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most bug-eyed hour. Help me, Kid Fisto Kenobi. You're my only blaster. <laughs> well, that's pretty good at the end, you know, uh, Jedi and blaster, uncivilized. Be beautiful prose, beautiful prose. Very Shakespeare nice. would be proud. Yes. He'd be proud. Gallivanting Jedi, that's an image that uh, I'm going to stay away for a special <laughs> moment. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks a lot for the Mad Lib suggestions. You're quite loquacious, Teeb. Ah, well, you know, I, uh, I don't know what that word means, but thank you. Oh, I won't tell you. You have to look in the dictionary, but I assure you it's good. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> All right, Teeb, you know what that sound means. It's another Tweet of the Week. That's what that is. Okay. Yes, this one comes to us from Ablo Pidalgo, and Ablo says, Update. Carrie Russell's character in Star Wars Episode Nine is called Marion Barfs and will feature in Star Wars Resistance as well. This is canon. What do you think about Barfs. Carrie Russell Barfs? Yeah, Marion Barfs. Why does that... Oh, Barfs. Is yeah. she going to be part Mog? I hope so. I've been waiting for the return of uh, any any reference to Spaceballs uh, in canon, actually. So, Did you know I once went to a comedy show at a Comic-Con and a man came out and sat there on that stage and he said that he hated Star Wars. And he said, right? wait, 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 don't yell at me. I have to explain. My parents were terrible parents, and they had me watch Spaceballs first. <laughs> really? Yes. So and he thinks he that Star that Wars is a parody of Spaceballs. He thinks that Star Wars is a worse version of a movie that he enjoyed as, as a kid. I don't know how else to – I mean, oh, I can't brilliant. even imagine. Ludicrous so. speed. <laughs> Ludicrous speed. <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing is, I, for what you want to say about Mel uh, Brooks, I mean, he, he really hits He's it right on the head with his satire, right? I mean, he just the right amount of silliness and, and cleverness. So um, He is a comedy god. Yeah, he's actually trying to sue us because he says that we've stolen all our material from him. Uh, we have a lawsuit in play right now, so, yeah. Well, you know... I took it I've, as a compliment. I, I would be honored if he would sue me for anything. I mean... Yeah. Have you seen any absolutely. of his? Uh, did you, what was the one on uh, the producers? Was that the Holly or the um, Broadway play? The producers. Have I have seen probably that? seen every Mel Brooks movie known to man. I really awesome. enjoy um, "To Be or Not to Be" is my favorite Mel Brooks movie. Okay. Okay. It's obscure. It's about World War II. It's I don't think very, I've seen that uh, one. A lot of people haven't, but it's it's pretty good. To be or not to be is a Shakespearean reference as well, right? Uh, I'm I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, Carrie Russell's character, we all wait with bated breath for barfs in episode nine. Bated breath. Well, as our regular listeners know, frequently we have a celebrity uh, interview, and today we're very lucky to have Kathleen Kennedy's secretary's cousin's roommate. Uh, who is a waitress at Applebee's. So uh, very welcome to have you on the podcast. Um, and we just would have had a few questions for you based on your interaction with Kathleen Kennedy, uh, things you could tell us. Uh, Teeb, go ahead, start it off with the first question. Hi, uh, thanks for talking to us. Um, we're, we're honored with your presence. And I just wanted to ask you, what's Kathleen Kennedy's favorite place to sit? Like, is she worried about people actually seeing her? Um, not at the Applebee's. Most people at the Applebee's, they don't recognize her. So um, she does like a table at the bar. Well, that's not surprising. Does she have a favorite drink? Um, she drinks only diet soda. Really? Oh, I, I had her on like a martini, a dirty martini or something like that. I think a lot of her dinners are work dinners. She oh. seems to be working on something. I see. At Applebee's. At Applebee's. Okay, cool. Um, so what's her favorite dish at Applebee's? Um, so this is kind of strange. Um at Applebee's, you know, it's an American restaurant, um, but she insists on getting poutine. Poutine. And I've told her ten times that we don't actually have cheese curds, so uh, we end up giving her a giant plate of fries with gravy and shredded cheddar cheese. Wow. To which she immediately dumps uh, half of a bottle of Tabasco sauce on top, and, and that's what she um, eats, and then she drinks Diet Coke. Does she eat it with her hands or with silverware? She uses a fork and a knife. How dignified. Great. 
Have you ever had poutine, Teeb? I have had poutine, but I unfortunately have not had it in Canada or in Louisiana. I had it here in the, the swamps. Okay. I, I'd like to open a restaurant that only serves Star Wars-themed dishes. So, like, a Star Wars poutine might have, um, you know, uh, bantha milk cheese crumbles, uh, you know, uh, what kind of meat could you eat? Ewok, Ewok filet, I guess, something like that. So. Well, I hear Mark Hamill is available to do any kind of milking that might be necessary. <laughs> he definitely has milked it right, for the last 40 years, hasn't he? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. He uh, we neglected to um, ask your name. I'm Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany. Okay, great. Well, is that with a Y or two I's or an I and an E? It's with a Y. But it's really it's Tiffany Joe. Ah, Tiffany Joe. Okay. Ah, Tiffany Joe. Yes. Well, Tiffany, um, Kathleen Kennedy has a reputation for speaking out for uh, those who don't have a voice, especially um, in Star Wars with her uh, very obvious and, and notable, laudable, I might add, um, desire to include uh, diversity in underprivileged groups or underrepresented groups um, in the new Star Wars films. And so I am curious, uh, based on her social generosity, uh, how much does she tip? 10% every time. Wow. She's very shrewd. That's why I'm not quick to refill her Diet Cokes. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Hmm, interesting. Are you a big tipper, Teeb? I am. Uh, I, I give a lot of tips all the time. Uh, a lot of people have told me to stop because uh, <laughs> they don't find it um, necessary. Uh, Unsolicited know, like, tips. Absolutely. Like, um, that hat sucks. There you go. <laughs> see, I, I have a similar problem. I'll just be walking down the street, and I'll just go up to people and give them money. Uh, typically, they're attractive women, and they always take it the wrong way. I don't understand. I'm just, just a tip. He dressed well today. They, they don't understand. That's a great idea, actually. I think more people should do that, and um, maybe I'll get more tips. There you go. But, you know, I, I dressed better. I think I should dress better. You would dress better if you had more uh, faking Star Wars t-shirts, by the way. Well, my body is so massive that a lot of the the better lines they don't really make clothes for people that are so beautiful right right yeah we do have some form-fitting ones like um spanks versions that we're coming out with next month so there's hope for me then yeah there's a new hope all right i think we got time for one more question each i had a question how does she come up with her amazing leadership ideas she spends a lot of time on her phone um so she must be doing something important um i know that sometimes she's just playing pokemon because um, our Applebee's actually has a pokey stop and it's a, you know, a spawning ground for Pidgeys. And I know she loves those. Um, oh. So I'm not sure what she's doing, um, but she seems really important. She's on, on the phone quite a bit also when she's not playing Pokemon. Maybe she's playing Pokemon to get ideas for designs for new aliens. That's possible. I mean, Pidgeys, everybody loves Pidgeys. Well, and, and what you can was, never have too many. Was it the Vulpex, uh, the Crystal Foxes and the Last Jedi? Those are completely <laughs> ripped off of a Pokemon name. I see name. where she got her ideas, yes. Yes, definitely. So, cool. Um, well, Tiffany, Tiffany Joe, uh, you're quite cute, by the way. I'm sure you do get good tips at Applebee's. Um, what does Kathleen Kennedy think is the biggest problem facing women in cinema today? Well, I know that she's, I've, I've overheard some of her conversations. I know she's trying to cast more women um, in, in important roles, which is admirable. Um, the men she casts, meh. you know, I don't know that she puts a lot of, of thought into that. Right. So who would you say was one of her big, you know, the casting choices that, that she was talking to you about where you were the most kind of dubious? Oh, uh, what's the guy's name? He's like the really arrogant pilot. Oscar Isaacs? Yes. Uh, Poe Dameron? Yes. So he is from the swamp, by the way. I oh, mean, our, right. our Applebee's is right next to the movie theater, so I have seen the movie. Okay. Okay. So yeah, Poe Dameron is from, uh, from the Endor Swamp, right? Yes, he is. And his character, is uh, Tantive Four, uh, is possibly to feature in Episode Nine uh, with the Swamp, so we may actually get to see him in, in uh, his home surroundings, which I think would be cool. It just seemed to me like she wanted to cast um, the biggest airhead she could find. That's uh -huh. what she was after um, when, I, when I overheard her so cell I'm phone conversations. I'm detecting a bit of uh, implication that she has a bit of actual anti-masculine prejudice. I'm not sure. I mean, she... She loves poutine and Diet Coke and Pokemon, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. But we're going to draw a line there, so she... Okay. Um, well, uh, have there been any moments uh, where you actually contributed to any of her decisions in regard to casting choices or production schedules or concepts uh, for new Star Wars movies? I mean, has she actually asked you for any ideas? Um, no, she hasn't. Um, she only asked for more Diet Coke. Okay. Great. Well, it's been lovely having you on. Once again, this is uh, Tiffany Joe, who's Kathleen Kennedy's secretary's cousin's roommate, waitress at Applebee's. Thank you. Thank you. Galactic, Galactic Thank you. News. 
Item, hot off the presses, we have some galactic faking news for you. Uh, this comes to us uh, just at the last minute here as we're recording, and it seems that there's some spicy drama going on with none other than Lady Proxima herself. Uh, Teeb, we'll go to you with more information. Yeah, uh, so from what we're hearing from the PEMZ Hyperlink crew, uh, we just found, uh, they just found Lady Proxima coming out of a cantina on Corellia. Uh, apparently she was bested by one of her sprawl rats, and rumors have been swirling around that she's actually just several Jawas stacked up on top of each other. Uh, when we asked her, she had this to say. Preposterous! Impossible! Where do these outlandish ideas come from? Gadzooks! She just slunk away into some putrid dark pool of muck! Well, Teeb, um, it's time for our main discussion of the week, and there was some news uh, that came out of the Comic-Con this week about uh, their rebooting uh, the animated uh, Clone Wars series. Did you hear that? What's, what's Comic-Con? Well, it's, uh, I guess, a bunch of people get together to eat pizza and occasionally uh, shave their neck beards and talk about Star Wars. Oh. Yeah. That sounds that sounds like fun. Yeah. Right. That sounds like fun. My, my neck beard has been due for several years now, so yeah. Um, but that's basically... I cannot grow a beard. I'm exactly. too beautiful for a beard, so yeah. The idea, you know, I was thinking, I mean, I've never really watched the Clone Wars too much. Did you, did you see it when it came out originally? I watched, um, oddly enough, I watched it not religiously and then i bought it on dvd mm -hmm. and then i watched the first season okay and then i didn't watch the second season and then i started watching it all over again on netflix and i only watched the first season again or up up into the i don't know it, it almost feels like it didn't end yeah is yeah. that right i, I read something about where it didn't actually end right <laughs> yeah it was it was sort of canceled last minute i guess um you know yeah. and then now they're sort of coming back with 12 new episodes uh, that's the word on the street. So um, it's interesting. It made me think, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, talk about new Disney properties. Um, I know Rebels has now hit its fourth and final season. Um, yes. But they've come out with a new cartoon uh, that's going to air, I think, this fall. Uh, the Resistance or Resistance, Star Wars Resistance. Have you heard about that one? I've heard about that one. And then, like, the Forces of Destiny. I don't know. I really liked Rebels, though. I, I yeah. Was... I was I I was a fan of that for sure. Yeah, I thought Rebels was good. Um, I think that I think that the idea of doing you know other properties with related to Star Wars has always been part of what Star Wars is. I mean, I remember as a kid when Return of the Jedi first came out, driving up you know to um, uh, in the car like a twelve hour trip, and I had those Return of the Jedi comics in the back of the car. So I mm -hmm. think that's part of what Star Wars is, but. There's also uh, going to be like a live action uh, Star Wars show that's going to be part of uh, um, Disney's new streaming service. So, you know, some people are wondering, is it oversaturation? How much is too much? Or is is there is it possible that there could be too much? I mean, what, what do you think about that? You know, it's it's I'm really glad you asked me this question because my entire life, I mean, I, I, I was born in 74 and I watched the first the first videotape I ever watched in my life was over at some rich kid's house. Um and he had Star Wars and I was amazed and because uh, to, to have something like that it was unheard of at the time obviously and, and I, I think about how spoiled that kids are now and how they have no idea what it was like right. I remember when HBO came out and Empire Strikes Back came came out and uh, that was like I, I, and I might be wrong because I'm wrong a lot but I might be wrong, uh, right I, I want to say it was almost a year after it was out of theaters before we got it on HBO it was a long time I know that I know that. Uh, see, I kind of saw them out of order. Um, the first one I saw in the theater was Return of the Jedi, and okay. I had already seen A New Hope. But as I recall, I saw it on TV originally. It was aired on TV, and it was. I think we recorded it actually on a VCR, um, so yes. it had all the commercials yeah. and everything. So those commercials I still have memorized. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That's I can funny. I can quote them to you. And and then wow. to actually get Empire Strikes Back, we had to go to a video store, and that must have been you know 82 or something like that or 83 i remember yeah. when my dad came home yeah. and he's like we're got we've got empire so yeah uh and i think you know scarcity makes makes a, a product more popular you know it's like supply and demand and i think about like i said as a kid that anticipation that like wanting something i don't think that kids now have that because yeah. they can have everything instantly and and you look at what disney and when disney bought star wars i was i was really excited um, because I'm, I'm a huge Disney fan and, um, I knew that they were going to be making more things, but I am getting more wary about 
the amount of things that are you know oversaturating the, the market right now and uh like rebels i really liked um so i i don't know it, it's it, it's hard to say that balance what i'm gonna do is like i always do i'm gonna watch something and if i don't like it after about the second episode i'm gonna stop watching it and that goes with pretty much everything i watch i think part of the so. problem you know uh, well there's there's two issues but um for me the main thing was i was thinking about pizza you know uh if you if you can eat pizza you go to the supermarket and you get like frozen pizzas, uh, you know, just load up your cart with frozen pizzas. You've always got them in the freezer. You get hungry, throw in the oven. That's one way to enjoy pizza. The other way is to, you know, make a plan, uh, dress up, go out to the really nice pizza parlor for mm -hmm. an evening. You might do that once or twice a year even. And which is more enjoyable? I mean, it's, it's sort of a philosophical question. For me, um, well, at least with pizza, I guess, uh, I'm probably going to go with the, the former and just have them in the freezer. So in that sense, the, the Star Wars <laughs> oversaturation sort of fits my personality. But on the other side, the thing I was thinking about was, uh, you know, the original movies when they came out were so just cataclysmic. You know, when the movie came yes. out, the universe changed forever. Right. Yeah, and it really did. I remember it was so important to see The Phantom Menace that we waited in line for three days with no one else in line. You know, because we just had to be the first ones. And you don't wow. get that feeling uh, anymore because they're coming out so frequently. And there's no space in the culture now uh, of development. In I mean, Star Wars development itself is a culture. The people that work at Lucasfilm are part of a culture. And when, when they're developing the movies now, there's no time or space uh, for them to react against what came before. Because it's all being done at the same time, right? So when you came out with mm -hmm. A New Hope, that was one story. And then right. you saw how Empire Strikes Back really reacted against some of the tone, some of the feeling of A New Hope. It was darker. It had a little bit more mm -hmm. gravity and weight to it. And then Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi also reacted against a, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back. That's not really possible when you come out with a movie every six months or every year or you know, six different television shows. That's another problem, I think. Yeah, I know it's, it's funny because I remember <laughs> I remember when in the 90s when they re-released the, uh, the originals – and they Special put in editions. that crap and everything. I refused to go see it. Is I refused that right? to go see any of them. Yeah, because I said, listen, I've been waiting a long time to see the next movie that's coming out. And I think I think we waited 16 years. And I was I was in Norway, and we saw it, and it was like a big event, you know, like you talked about. But I remember um, they did an interview. And again, I was over in Norway, so watching interviews, watching everybody on the states on on CNN or whatever it was, and they were interviewing this guy. And he was, you know, dressed up all in Jedi garb and everything like that. And he was just like, you, was it you a Dave Filoni? Was it Dave Filoni dressed as Plukun? <laughs> I, I no, <laughs> it might have been. I don't know. I think but, he might be Norwegian. Um, we got that wrong. It was not. He's not a. He's not <laughs> Cherokeean, but he's Norwegian. Ah, that, that's possible. But yeah, but I remember just like watching that, and being like, damn, I wish I was over there. You know, I wish I was in the states right now because I, I would totally be one of these guys. But they interviewed the guy, and they were like, well, now that this movie's coming out, and we know that there's going to be two more movies, and then that's going to be it. What are you going to do with your life? And the guy says, I don't know. I'm probably – I swear to God, this is what he said. He says, I'm probably going to go home and shove dynamite up my butt because I won't <laughs> have anything else to live for after that. And I thought, that guy gets it. You know, I'm <laughs> like, he totally Absolutely. gets it. It's like it's and, like after that. and and But now it's everywhere. Well, you know, in my case, I wish I brought that feeling. I wish I had brought the dynamite to the Phantom Menace so I could have just taken care of it then right after I saw it. You know, but <laughs> – well, are, uh, are you familiar with fanboys at all? The movie Lo fanboys? loosely i mean i am one but yeah i i, I am familiar <laughs> with them <I'm> sure <laughs> um because that's kind of like what fanboys is all about like uh how a, a guy well a bunch of guys decide they're going to break into um skywalker ranch and watch phantom menace right <laughs> where it comes out and uh i won't spoil that for you if you ever decide to watch the movie but it, it's it's interesting how things play out with that we actually so, did yeah. that here in Asia, IG69. I, we actually had a connection to a pre-screening um, where they actually made yeah. sure the equipment's going, and we actually did get to see The Last Jedi about a week and a half before it released. Um, so it is still possible to live out those dreams. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, now, now you can live it out every week. There you go. Well, <laughs> well, that's the question. I mean, I love Star Wars. I do, you know, not a week goes by that I don't watch some kind of Star Wars property uh, of some sort. And um, I was actually hoping to get to the point where – uh, every second of each day is actually taken up with brand new Star Wars content, right? So, so the way it would work was I would wake up, say I woke up at nine in the morning, I would have uh, right. the very beginning of the day filled with some sort of like reverse Truman Show with Star Wars, right? So we're out here in the world, but then 24 hours uh, new Star Wars content constantly being beamed into my eyeballs wherever I turn. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. No, I mean, I mean, I'd, I'd definitely be on board for that. I could be in like a, a staff meeting or something like that, and have somebody just like constantly in my head, just like 
humming duel of the fakes for example there you I go mean, i mean that could, that, that could be a thing the, the problem may not be oversaturation it might be, it might just be mediocre saturation okay and 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 that that's a reality too and and that's another thing these kids they because they don't have to wait for anything they don't appreciate anything and so they criticize everything that's right and that i think is the biggest reality that i've noticed with these uh you know the people that are super nitpicky about everything i mean i'm a critic so i I criticize stuff whatever but i don't think that that these kids can appreciate anything because they haven't had to suffer there you go they haven't had to suffer that 20-year gap in films you know and that's the nerd rage comes out of entitlement doesn't it right yeah yeah yeah, absolutely well we'll see this this my idea you know let's say it was like these little embedded contact lenses that had like microchips in them that had the constant content that was being created being made to your brain 24 7 this would actually solve that problem too because people would be too occupied watching the newest content that they wouldn't have time to complain on twitter (laughs) about you know new plot points and stuff like that too so double bonus huh that's twofer. true. That is true. It's a twofer. Yeah, definitely. Although it might be driving kind of difficult, but I mean, you know, here in the swamp, nobody can drive anyway. So yeah, I mean, who, who wants to get into a car when you've got a new Star Wars, uh, you know, reenactment yeah. of, uh, you know, whatever little story? Um, the possibilities are endless. So this could start. Who, who was it that was going to be doing the live action? Was it John Favreau? I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, was he was he involved in games of Game of Thrones? Possibly. I think it was there was some talk that it was going to be people involved in Game of Thrones originally, maybe with a live action show too. But I think you're right, John oh. Favreau um, was the one. For some reason, I want to say John Favreau, but I, I could be wrong about that. But I can check know. that for us really quick here uh, because you know I have this new device, uh, which right now currently is not beaming uh, Star Wars content to me. So I'm Damn trying it. to use the internet. I think I think that is the problem is because before the only way you could complain would be like get out a pen and paper, you know, write uh, <laughs> write Lucasfilm or because because no one's gonna buy you know. Six million stamps and sit there licking stamps, you know, just to say like I didn't like it that Ray doesn't have a backstory, and then send it to like six million random people, right? So I swear to God, if you wrote a letter to like a studio right now, the FBI would come and arrest you. Like if you just wrote a letter and sent a stamp, and they're like, "This person is a straight up psycho. <laughs> you need to come and arrest." Thanks for reading my now. letter. I decided to send you some white sugar as well, just to say yeah. thank you. Yeah, it, you're right. It is John Favreau. I'm um, just checking ah, here. Okay. Uh, well okay. done. Uh, he, boy, he looks a lot like Colin Trevorrow. So he directed Iron Man 1 and 2. So Have they ever been spotted in the same place together? Because, I mean, this, they I don't want to start anything, but it, 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 a Kiwi clone. A, a Kiwi clone. A clone of a Kiwi. There you go. I like it. And I then, like it. And then he can have one made that's like a little younger than him for, you know, like so he has like a, a son, maybe. Yes. See, and then he... that son could say really tacky, terrible lines and ruin things for people, maybe? It could be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be amazing. So uh, Favreau actually isn't a stranger to Star Wars. I didn't know this. Besides directing the Iron Mans, he did uh, also the Jungle Book. Um, he's right now, this is going to be a blockbuster. This is going to be absolutely massive. He's filming a live-action adaptation of The Lion King. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm, I've, I have not watched, and it's funny, I haven't watched The Jungle Book. It's on my list. I'm going to watch it yeah. because I love the animated one so much as a kid. Uh, but uh, but I, I'm actually excited because I know a lot of people that actually did like the Jungle Book. It was and good. I, I love The Lion King. That is my favorite Disney movie of all time. But to me, it's not going to ruin The Lion King animated to see the live action one. It's just another. It's just another story. You know? Yeah. It's just another adaptation of it. So, well, uh, which is basically Hamlet anyway. <laughs> who do you, do you know? You didn't you didn't see the Jungle Book? Do you remember who played the big monkey king or the orangutan king in that? Uh, do you, do you remember? You're you're pretty good with names. Uh, Actually, I'm not. <laughs> no, uh, um, no was somebody, uh, somebody fantastic. Uh, that was to was me that John stole Goodman the show. Baloo? I think John Goodman might have been Baloo. Bill Murray. It was Bill Murray. That's right. Bill, Bill Murray, Murray was Baloo. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so okay. he was Blue, and then the King Louis. Oh, it was Christopher Walken. Is who it was. That was a great, great casting choice. Are you choice. kidding me? It was Christopher fantastic. Walken? Yeah, yeah. It's not who you expected, so it took you a minute, and then you're like, oh, my goodness. Okay, now I, I absolutely have to see this movie yeah. now. So, so John Favreau has made some great stuff. I think he's a good choice to do this live-action show. Um, he loves Star Wars. Yeah, he's a big Star Wars nerd. So Didn't realize yeah. he's already been a voice actor. He did pre-Vizsla in The Clone Wars. He was uh, yes. the voice actor, and he was an alien in Solo Star Wars Story. So. Yeah, he was, he was the dude with all the arms, yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, uh, Rio, right? Rio? Rio, yeah, That's right. yeah. So, so I think this is a great choice, Lucasfilm hitting out of the park with this one. Um, and I've been talking about a live-action Star Wars show for a long time. So, yeah, I mean, here we are complaining about new Star Wars content, and we're the fans. <laughs> I mean, we do sound kind of like jerks, right? Um, yeah. 
But yeah. but uh, if I could choose one thing, you know, I was n- never a huge fan of animation in general. Uh, the Clone Wars, meh, it was okay. Rebels was good. I, I have to say Rebels was entertaining. But if I could choose one property outside of the movies, it would be a live-action show, like a Game of Thrones style, you know, mm. maybe a... Where would you set? Uh, there's been discussion, like, would you do, oh, um, you know, Knights of the Old Republic? Would you do some pre-Republic stuff? Maybe something crazy out in the future? What would you God, do? You know, say? I would love to see some Revan stuff. Darth I would Revan. Love to see that, okay. yeah, yeah, because it it's been you know it's been played out in the expanded universe, but so many people don't know anything about the expanded universe. If it, you know, they, they just want to they just know about it from the movies and stuff like that. So sure. I think that you could do a lot with that. Great source I mean, you material. You could do a lot, yeah. Hmm. Very good. Well, yeah, it's interesting. You know, uh, I think I think we're going to see some psychological problems coming about here eventually with uh, Star Wars addiction because you're going to hit a point <laughs> where people just can't handle not having new content. Uh, it's been so great to have all these new movies the last few years as an adult. I never imagined that this would be the I case. Know. What's yeah. going to happen when, you know, they take a few years off? I mean, suicide's going to go up. Uh, you know, meth addiction is going to go up. We're in for it. I really, you know. So maybe maybe in the long run, this is going to be a big problem. I, you know, I, like I keep saying, I want, I want them to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> suffering. I, that's a Sith saying, right? Through suffering, there is wisdom, or something like that. I, I, well, I think fear I'm right leads about to that. anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. You know. Yeah, there you go. Yoda. Hate leads to suffering. That's it. Yeah. But I know there's like a Sith tenant that what I played when I played Knights of the Old Republic, where mm-hmm. if you pick a Sith character, there's like you know pain is truth or some I don't know. But it's uh, it, it, to me, I think that that's that's something that you know uh, it, it builds character as it's, i've heard before it's interesting as you kind of look at the philosophy of star wars you know you have the sith version and the yoda version and it yeah. sort of it sort of boils down to take two things and it's like a flow chart are these the same thing no well then say that they are right <laughs> like pain <laughs> is suffering suffering is expansion expansion is ludicrous you know i mean you could do it with anything right that's sort of the way they yeah. do it <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but I mean, it, it, you know, it sounds it sounds cool. <laughs> it right. doesn't matter if it's true. It just it sounds cool. But yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, I, I'm I'm like I said, to me, I'm not gonna watch that Forces of Destiny or whatever because it it looks like it's just totally driven by an agenda that mm-hmm. I'm not really interested in. So I'm sorry, I'm not gonna watch it. Uh, you know, if somebody if somebody comes to me and says, oh, but there's this really cool thing in it, like you just said about how Christopher Walken <laughs> is in uh, uh, Jungle Book. Well, now I'm gonna go. Now, now I have to go see that. So is so there a point I, where something can get so detestable to you in the Star Wars universe that then you have to circle back and then watch it, like the holiday special or anything like that? Or... <laughs> um, you mean detestable in the sense that like the holiday special introduced Boba Fett? Well, that's true. But, it did, yeah. Yeah. But, but just sort of quality, uh, or I mean. Is pretty pretty bleak. No, I mean, uh, I, I guess I'm highly influenceable when it comes to listening to people whose opinions I trust about certain things. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, I, I can watch like like I said, Forces of Destiny. I saw just just scrolling on Twitter. I was like, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I was just like, yeah. I mean, it my you know, I have a son. If I had a daughter, I would probably totally be watching Forces of Destiny. You know, and and that would be cool. But I don't. So I mean, I, I definitely, if I had a daughter, I'd be watching it with her because you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you try to be a good dad and stuff like that. Even if you don't like certain stuff, you watch it with your kid. Mm. So, but yeah, I mean, I think it's cool that they have that. But I, I get pissed off when I hear people say stuff like, "Well, now they have a strong female." Leia was the biggest badass I can remember growing up. I mean, she was the sure. first strong female that I saw as a kid on in a movie. You know, again, this was the late '70s when I whatever but i didn't watch a lot of like you know betty davis and black and white sure, movies and crap right. like that but well, they had and... strong males forever it, it's stupid to sit there and it, it's just marketing garbage and it, it's just stupid when i think i think the latest movies you know if you look at a at the character of ray it, it's really um it's actually not very good for women because it it portrays her as being this weirdo you know she's got these incredible force <laughs> powers she doesn't have any Weird. family to speak of you know she's not your traditional normative family so so what is the message here to little girls the little the message is if you're a woman you're weird uh, everyone thinks you're strange uh, you don't have any friends you know what I'm saying I it's actually the only incredibly guy that's hit on anti-feminist you is evil and the only guy that you're ever gonna get hit on by is, is evil that's yeah. right that's right so for for all they're saying about these movies doing such great things for women I think they have to really consider that uh, the way they dealt with Leia might have been a little bit more positive for females. I but. think so. She's like, you want to get this walking carpet out of my face, you know? And she's like, uh, you know, hey, aren't you a little? Str-? The first line I think she has of any 
you know, when she first encounters a rebel is, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? Yeah, She's like quips. giving it to him. The guy's coming to save her butt or whatever. Or, I mean, she doesn't know right away, but she's just like, I'm being tortured by this flying orb by my father. That's how did he not know that was his daughter? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, all that pain and torture. And she's like disconnecting from like, you know, reality and going, being one with the force and stuff like that a little bit, maybe, you know, like leaving her body and he's not like, huh? Because Darth Vader, presumably Darth Vader didn't even know he had two kids, right? I mean, that was the idea that we revealed to in Jedi that he, he finds out, you know, he had a daughter. I mean, that's why, that's why that, that scene at the end of yeah. Revenge of the Sith was done so, so terribly. I mean, they had so many characters around. It should have been, it should have been done much more secretly. Uh, you didn't really get a sense of, uh, oh my gosh, we got to hide these babies. Um, I mean, they're out in broad view of everybody. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it didn't really work for me, so... Uh, do, you cater to the, do you cater to the belief, though, that um, that uh, that Sheev took the life force out of uh, Amidala and put it into Darth Vader? Have you oh, heard that theory? Yeah, I've heard it. Um, nah, he, she lost the will to live because Palpatine killed her from afar. No, I don't like... I, yeah, that makes Palpatine too powerful, I think, um, that he can just suck people's, suck people's life out from a distance like that. Uh, I, I don't really go with that. that. That basically makes him a character who's who's God, who has no weaknesses at all. And uh, yeah, I don't think Star Wars profits from that kind of strength. You know, that what make, what makes Star Wars interesting is that even the villains, you know, have their weaknesses. I mean, Hux. Yeah. Hux yeah. is a simple character, but he's a villain. But he he has his obvious weaknesses of jealousy and competition. And I think that's what's compelling about Star Wars is the villains are so so cool. You know. And rabbits. Don't forget rabbits. He can't really handle rabbits very well. Rabbits. Yeah, he was in Peter. Peter Rabbit. Oh, was he? Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, yeah he's I was getting his, at, his butt kicked by the rabbit the whole movie. Sorry. <laughs> now, that would <laughs> be know, a good first... mashup. Revenge of the Sith with Peter Rabbit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, when I first saw the trailer for it, um, you know, I have like a, a little bit of a joke about how he's, you know, he's like so like super Nazi at, in the first order. He's like, we will destroy the Republic! Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, take it down about 30 notches there, brother. And then you see him in the Peter Rabbit trailer and he's like, ah! And I'm like, oh Jesus, man! <laughs> so it was just kind of funny to me. Like, it's he, it's like back again. It was actually not bad. Actually, Peter Rabbit was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty good. Was it a kids movie? I, it seemed like it was sort of. It had the look of a kids movie, but Peter yeah. Rabbit's doing these kind of yeah. very manipulative, horrible things. Like, yeah, it was. It was definitely a kids movie. But I asked my kid later, I'm like, "What did you learn?" And he's like, uh, "I was like, did you think Peter Rabbit was like a good guy?" And he's like, "No." And I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> I just want to make sure because he's tor- you can't like, have good like, guys anymore. We have all these properties that none of them have any any real traditional good guys in them anymore, right? So. Well, we're losing bad guys though too. When you look at like Maleficent, where they're like, uh, "Nah, she was good the whole time." Right. You know, she wasn't just a, a, a dragon queen. Yeah, you know, we have to make her good. So I don't know. So Desert Island, uh, you can pick one property, uh, Star Wars property to have with you for the rest of your time, except for uh, the original movies, okay? So Ugh. no New Hope, no Empire, no Jedi, anything else, uh, any uh, sequels or prequels or TV shows or comics or anything, what would be the one thing you'd take with you? Do I have any dynamite? <laughs> sure, you can fashion it out of some coconuts, <laughs> you know? Um, God, uh, I hate when I get asked these kind of questions. Um, like, what's your favorite? Uh, well, okay, so any properties uh, i'm going to say the revan the okay. revan games from the knights of the old republic i played that on uh, on xbox okay, and cool. i just loved it I, I loved how when you made choices it actually like developed you into that like even your appearance changed like if you did a bunch of bad crap you like turned gray and dark Super evil. And had, yeah you, you and i remember like I, I actually decided to make my character as dark as you could possibly make the character and at the end you have to like kill all of your friends and i was like why really does that not surprise me i mean me you say you love suffering so i mean <laughs> <laughs> no but i was like really upset about it i was like i don't want to get killed these are my partners i've been running around with these people the whole game and then it was like it was like interesting because i was like damn i get it like there really are consequences for you know for being bad there you go even in this this game and so i thought like the whole revan thing was just really cool to me because i connected to it the most so like if i only had one thing it would be revan so life lessons i guess that's a good one and uh for me i'd say you know i'm kind of torn i really like the han solo movie a lot of people didn't i thought it was awesome and it had it, it kind of uh a uh, single story right so you go on a desert island you just want to pop something in popcorn distraction movie whatever um so i might i might even pick the han solo movie I thought I thought it was under undervalued, underrated. Um, so yeah, why not? Yeah, 
No, I love, I love I loved Solo. I thought it. I mean, the the kid could only do what he could do. He can't be Harrison Ford. There's no way anybody can be Harrison Ford, but Harrison Ford. And like I said, if he was running around in his seventies. You know. Well, and the other reason I say that ridiculous. Is, is because, you know, people listening to the podcast out there, if we got any of those uh, fanboy haters, I mean, you can just hear the collective groan, and that just makes me so happy. I love that. So, um, <laughs> and, pain okay. makes you happy is what you're saying? Yes. Oh, I love it. Yeah, see? I, mean, I drink, I drink, a, I drink a mug that says fanboy tears, you know, just like, uh, what's her name, Andy Gutierrez or whatever from yes. the Star Wars show. Yeah, she has that mug. Yes. I actually, I actually sent her the mug. Um, Did you? Yeah, it was oh, my design. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm the first one to originate wow. that. So, yeah. So, okay, uh, same question, flip it around. You can expunge one of these properties from the universe forever. Which one would it be? Just absolutely obliterate it, never to be seen again. Man, that's bad because I really am a giant Star Wars fan. Like, right. I wouldn't get rid of anything. Uh, like I said, even though I didn't watch uh, Forces of Destiny or anything like that, uh, I believe that there's a place for it in the sure. universe. Uh, but if I have to, like, blast her to the head, uh, oh, man... I'd get rid of Clone Wars then. Oh, the the animated like, show? Yeah, as much as like Osaka. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of her name. But yeah. Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka Tano or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, Ahsoka. Yeah. I, I like, but they actually bring her back into Rebels so I can kind of, she kind of gets to exist. So. Right. Actually, there you go. So there's, you don't lose much yeah. anyway. I think I'd get rid of it too. So um, there you go. It looks like we're both really excited for this reinstatement of 12 new episodes of the Clone Wars. So Disney's <laughs> really been listening to the fans on that one. Faking Star Wars Listener Mail. Hello, Storm Duper. This is Sir Reginald Umbridge the Third. I was calling from across the pond to ask who you think Carrie Russell should play in Star Wars Episode Nine. Don't say Ray's mother, or I'll smash your tea and crumpets. Cheerio. Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I know everyone has been kind of uh, checking the internet leaks on Carrie Russell. I don't know. I have a few ideas, but I'd like to hear what you have to say, Teeb. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of people that that say they want her to be Ray's mother. Um, but I think if Is she she's old just, I I think she should just work at like say like a a local restaurant. Yeah. And like maybe, an Applebee's. Yeah, so, yeah, like I think like an Applebee's, and then maybe um she can, you know, listen to people that think that they know how to organize the universe right, and right. Uh, run it into the ground. Um, I think that would be good. Good uh, inspiration you know, there. Even, yeah. If that did happen, do you think we could, uh, do you think that they would actually get Tiffany Joe and welcome her to the premiere as part of I mean, of if, they, the, if they don't, they're criminals. I yeah. mean, that's... <laughs> All right. Um, what about the idea of her playing like Ray's darker sister, evil sister, uh, you know, um, I think she's old, she's, she's a little older, but... She's still she could be made up to look young enough to be sort of her her older sister. Maybe she comes back and she's trained as a Sith, you know, and she's evil and um maybe she seduces Kylo Ren and then Rey gets really jealous and kills the both of them. Well, she's from the south, so maybe she seduces Rey, you know. Ooh, that would be spicy for a Star Wars movie. I would pay double to see that. I I'd, I'd pay triple. So, <laughs> there you go. Wow. I win. Well, <laughs> uh uh, I mean, uh, Feliz, uh, not Felicity Jones. Sorry, um, Daisy Ridley has has uh, been training, uh, you know, with Natalie Portman, who had that famous uh, lesbian scene in The Black Swan. I heard that she's actually been um, doing some training scenes with her in uh, to get ready for Episode Nine. So your idea may not be far off, which would be a first for Star Wars, our first lesbian love scene. I think the 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 fans would would eat it up. They I would mean, go they've nuts. Been, they've been they've been clamoring for something like that for a very long time. One thing's so. for sure, if if Star Wars did choose to do that, that's that's really listening to the voice of a lot of these uh, haters who've been coming forward and saying that Star Wars has been becoming too diverse and strayed too much. So, if that is the case, they've really listened and, and made this the correction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. It is also possible that she could be doing just performance capture as a as an alien species of some sort. Would you like to see her play a good alien or a bad alien? Well, I mean, a good alien in the sense of, of what perspective? Oh, just working for the rebels or resistance, you know, or not not an evil bounty hunter like IG-69. Somebody who has character and um, and, and uh, depth. demeanor and depth. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to see her obviously play an evil person because evil people are more interesting. Okay, good, good. All right, well, thank you. Evil for the alien, question. sorry. sorry. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, sorry to talk over you there. I'm just a little anxious uh, today. You know, somebody's actually got a gun to my head asking me to finish this up because after we get done here in the studio, um, they're going to be bringing in Dave Filoni and they're going to be running the uh, audio track uh, ADR for the Clone Wars uh, new, new series. So we got to get out of here. Oh, we may never see yeah. the Clone Wars. Um, you better wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. But thanks for your question. If you have any more, you can uh, send them to us at Duper Storm or Faking Star Wars Radio on Twitter, or you can call our call center in uh, Topeka, Kansas, and leave your question on the message on the answer machine there. Well, hey, Teeb, that's all for this week. It was a fantastic uh, first episode having you on the show. Absolutely. Uh, so tell the listeners where they can find us. Well, you can follow Faking Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram at Faking Star Wars and on Facebook at Real Faking Star Wars. We are the real Faking Star Wars, not the fake Faking Star Wars. There is a no. fake Faking Star Wars, I think. We have nothing to do with them. Hmm. If you want to submit a question for us on Twitter, use the hashtag FSW Radio, and if you're lucky, we may read it next week. You can also get official Faking Star Wars t-shirts and other fantastic gear on T, that's T-E-E, public, tpublic.com, slash user, slash Faking Star Wars. And you can follow me on Twitter at DuperStorm. And you can follow me at Film Grouch and follow FSW Radio on Twitter, too. If you guys like what you hear and want to support us, please go to Faking Star Wars and click on our Patreon. And you can buy in at any subscription level you like. It really helps us fakers make the content you love. As always, stay tuned to FakingStarWars.net for quality Star Wars comedy, parody, and satire. Thanks to all of you for listening, and a special thank you to Teeb for taking the co-host duties this week. Just make sure the credit's clear, okay? <laughs> and to all of you out there, may the foe be with you. See you next time. <laughs>